previously on Phoenix Wright Dual Destinies. So, our first witness is... There's a cardboard box? Snake, are you in there? Snake! Snake! And now, back to listening to people! Hello! Snickle B, back with some more Phoenix Wright Dual Destinies. When we last left off, we completed the first part of the trial, and we learned that Robin was in fact a girl, which is appropriate because the, the the name Robin is is uh, as you guys point out a gender neutral name. You know, it's funny. M most of my experiences with the name Robin have been actually with girls. I haven't met many guys that are named Robin, and uh, it's off to an interesting start. I feel like just the way this is structured, it, it actually reminds me of a lot of um, Mist. <laughs> strangely enough, uh, many guys play the original Mist. So in the game, you have these two brothers. They're both trying to say to not trust the other brother and to save them. And by the end of the game, you learn that they're both lying. They're both evil. And if you save either of them, you get the bad ending. You have to go do something totally off script, essentially, to get the good ending to find this other guy. That's what this kind of makes me think of. It's sort of a, the other way around, though. Right now, it looks like, oh, any of them could be the bad guy. I'm sure it's going to be none of them are the bad guy, and it's actually the guy that we're probably not even thinking about right now. So I'm still holding strong. It's going to be an Aristotle. We did also see, though, um, and I didn't really notice this until I went back to edit. I did see that this thing had fallen out of Scuttlebutt's box. It looked like it was a laptop, but there was a picture on there. And it just it flashed by so briefly, I couldn't really tell what it was. But when I went back to edit, I saw it was uh, a picture of her and the three friends. And, but it, it was kind of hard to tell whether that was like a real genuine picture or something she like photoshopped herself into. So maybe suggesting that she just had always wanted to be friends with them, but either maybe too shy or maybe just because she's a little weirdo. <laughs> maybe the other group was like, like, ew, I don't know. I mean, you, you kind of been like spying on us at all times. You, you had a camera in my toilet the other day. No, it's just for the scoop. You don't understand. <laughs> what scoop? What scoop is there? Why don't you take a shit? But yes, so I got quite a bit of uh, feedback on the uh, <laughs> giving the Joshua voice to Robin in her inner female uh, form. And uh, everybody just loved it. Just like Miss Chudo. Everyone's just fair voice. <laughs> okay, I want to explain sort of my thought process for that. So I was thinking, because if, if she was a girl that was capable of making her voice so deep, I imagine that she would have her a real voice would sound almost like a guy trying to sound like a girl. Well, although I suppose that, you, that could be said for all of my female voices, right? So I was like, okay, well, which of them, which of my voices sounds most like that? And I thought, okay, well, the Joshua is kind of like that, you know? It's sort of, it's a guy's voice with super flamboyant. So that was, that was my thought process. But everyone was just like, fuck, Nico, it's so cringy, shit! So, okay, shit, all right. In that case, just we'll go with a regular girl's voice. I, I didn't want to go too generic. I kind of wanted, I felt like I wanted to give her something sort of, unique and wasn't just generic female voice somebody suggested maybe miyushi uh also when she's uh slowly saying a word she doesn't actually saying the word slowly she's spelling the the word out oh yes and the other thing and, and this is something that i get constantly brought up every time i play a phoenix right game nico if you listen to the sound of the beeps you can tell the ch different changes in uh and tone and stuff here's the thing though guys 90 percent of the time i'm talking over that stuff so i i don't hear like what the beeps sound like initially and then when it's changed. The only time, in this instance, it did do at one point where there was just ellipses where it was deep and then it got higher and more ellipses. So that one moment, yeah, I probably could have noticed, but I'm just not listening to that, you know? Because like I said, I'm talking over it most of the time. Usually I'm just trying to pay attention to what they're saying and what their emotion is while they're saying it. I'm not listening to the little beepy things at the same time. It's too hard. I, unless I let every text box finish beeping, entirely before I talk. I'm not really going to probably notice it. But yes, I talk over most of it, so that's why I don't notice as much. If you're playing in the game silently by yourself, yeah, it's going to be a lot easier to notice. But if you're doing it this way, not so much. Also, you guys did point out something, and, and this makes sense. So uh, the difference between the first case where Athena was uh, defending Junie and this case where she's doing it, despite the first case being after the second case, made me wonder, well, what was the point of Phoenix coming in to save her? Well, the difference was that she didn't have anybody up there with her, of course. I I, I completely forgot that. She was up there by herself. So she, in this case, even, she has Apollo up there to help her. And it's very clear that she really does need Apollo up there because you see her inexperience, which I think was really smart. I think they did a really good job with that. Quite a, a number of times where she almost just fucked up the whole thing. Apollo came out and saved her. Which was another great thing to see, because Lord knows it was like the exact same thing happening in uh, Apollo Justice with uh, 
Apollo and Phoenix. And even in the end, she didn't really save the case. It was really the the three friends coming out and going, hey, uh, I, I'm the killer. No, I'm the killer. I'm Spartacus. That uh, allowed them to get another investigation going. But I'm hoping this next part, maybe she'll like sort of come back and like redeem herself. But yes, thank you for, for clarifying that. But anyway, I think that's that was the majority of the, the big things <laughs> but yeah okay i'll give i'll give robin a uh, an actual female voice this time <laughs> no more joshua okay fine be that way picky penguins anyway investigation day two let's get started back at the anything agency where we do whatever the fuck we feel like october 25th right anything agency wow you totally fucked that shit up athena i'm sorry boss i, I couldn't do it you know, that little bit of advice you gave me, it didn't help! The worst of times are when lawyers have to force their biggest smiles. I don't exactly know what you meant. But there was no way I could force a smile in that courtroom today. I'm glad, I'm just glad you remember that. <laughs> Hell, I don't remember half the shit that comes out of my mouth. But now, how about relaxing a little? Relax! Not gonna happen! Here, have some plastic spaghetti. Judy, she asked me to defend her because she believes in me. But I, I, I felt completely helpless. If it weren't for their confessions, I'd... But if this trial proceeds in the same manner and ends in the same way as the mock trial... Uh, could you get not lose everything you worked so hard to gain? Well, I'll just have to make sure that doesn't happen. Then won't I? Beaver McTeeth face? No, I can't lose it all. Not now! You okay, Athena? Don't worry, I had the same shit happen to me in my own game. A lot of people got pissed off. You're turning kind of pale. I just can't stand around here! I'm gonna finish the investigation! Can it wait? I stick a batch of... batch of freshly baked cookies out of my magic panties! <laughs> oh my god! Jersey, why don't you show up more in this game? Because there's, there's too many characters! We already have the, the alternate female sidekick character, who's also a main character. Sometimes. Thanks, I better get going. Send me, one, send me one for when I get back. Apollo, you wait here. I need to see Judy at the detention center first right away. Seriously, you're gonna, you're gonna drop me now? After I saved your ass? No, wait, I'm going with you. Sorry, Mr. Wright, but I better go too. Yup, because I can't leave without your, your without your little Maya friend to, to wisecrack every stupid action you make. No problem, you two be careful. I'm gonna stand here and do absolutely nothing. Mmm, panty cookies. October 25th, attended center, my reserters, rub, <laughs> What's it gonna say? There's so much need to ask Junie. What happened in court today? Where do we go from here? Ah! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. oh my god, too, too, clo too close, man, no. Hello there. Well now, fancy meeting you here. Oh, Professor Means, what brings you here? And your big, gross teeth. I asked him to come. He arrived just a little before you. Ah, uh, god damn it. Bring him here to forge evidence or something? I wanted to ask him something, but first, Athena, I wanted to apologize for my sudden confession after you worked so hard to defend me. She was calling me Athena until just now. Damn it! Oh, because she doesn't want to do it in front of him? Or just after this last, last, uh, trial section? No, I should be the one apologizing. The whole thing spiraled out of my, out of my control. <laughs> Athena, I... Don't worry, I'll bring it tomorrow! I'll find something to prove your innocence! Uh, about that! Athena- Oh, is she gonna drop her? I've been thinking of asking Professor Means to defend me. Uh... No, he's he's totally gonna be the bad guy. He's totally fucking evil. Huh? My myself only heard, just heard of this a moment ago. Uh oh, so she thinks Professor Means would be... No! I can't let this happen! Die, old man! Not with the way he wants to do things. Junie! I know, Athena, but will you please hear me out? Sorry, but you kind of sucked ass yesterday. I almost died because of you. Athena, do you actually think you or Robin could have committed this crime? Remember, Mist! Remember, Athena! The body was moved right before the mock trial. Besides Junie, they're the only ones who can move freely around the campus at that time. I mean, I guess the only other person could be a scuttlebutt, but I, I, I don't know. I guess it could be, but she already had like a little bit of a freak out. I think it's gonna be one of those throw a curveball and it's the the teacher or something. Because also, I feel like that would be then a win for why his 
thought process is a bad way to think about it. I'm sorry, Jenny, but at this point, I can't rule them out. I was afraid you'd say that. Unless this guy's supposed to show up later. Juniper is seeking a lawyer who can clear her, clear all three of their names. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. So every time I see it, just, it makes like my stomach do a little flip. Only I am capable of such a feat. I'm really good at faking this shit, don't worry. But, but how can you possibly prove that all three of them are innocent? I am a result-oriented person. Come tomorrow, I won't fail to have a perfect piece of evidence ready. For the end really does justify the means. Especially for me, Professor Aristotle Means. Ugh, I really don't like the sound of that. I think I said, like, Aristotle means just be like, arrest by all means or something. That's like sort of the, the play on the pun or something. I'm sorry, but just you believe I'm innocent. I believe that my friends are innocent, too. All right, that's how you really feel. We respect your decision. Apollo? <coughs> oh, I did that thing where you, you burp and then like a little bit of like your stomach acid comes up and that. Ugh, ugh. God, you wouldn't believe the number of burps I have to cut out of every fucking <laughs> recording. It's like, I don't burp this much. I think it's just because I'm talking so much in the in the recording, but it's like every few minutes it's like, Bruh. stop swallowing so much air, God. <coughs> that was a gross one though. Ugh. But we want to continue our investigation. Can we ask you some more questions? Sure, I don't mind. Professor Means, would you like to stay and join our conversation? No, I'm busy going to go and prepare that fake shit for you. Yes, of course. I'm your lawyer, after all. There's that smile again. Why does it always creep me out? Because I'm really the bad guy. Come on. Just like seriously imagine him having a freak out. You're probably fucking terrifying, actually. <laughs> About your confession, Junie. It's not true, is it? You just said what you did because Robin had confessed on the stand, didn't you? Yes, I wasn't thinking straight. All I knew was what I had it was I had to help my friend. You mean because of that school rule? The one that says you can't graduate if you are convicted of a crime. No, I didn't do it because of some rule. I did it because she's my friend. <coughs> Why is there discord in her voice again? Yes, we still need to figure this shit out. Could it really be that the friendship between the three of them is on the rocks? Well, I mean, they did kind of jump in front of a bus for each other. So, can't be that endangered unless they're like some other reason. They got like dirt on each other. There's more here than meets the eye. Can I do the thing here? Even though I'm not in trial, I still got a widget on my neck. When did the three of you become, first become friends? Well... Even though we were in different courses, we really bonded from the first day at school. That was back before the sky was rent all the time, and Monokuma showed up. Oh! We fought to work to together to bring an end to the dark age of the law. That was when our proof of friendship came about. So the dark age of the law was still going on, okay. There's that proof of friendship thing again. Just wish this were, were as simple as that. <laughs> I told you, it's a, it's a tattoo on each of our butt cheeks that forms a triangle, a friendship. Or a love triangle. <laughs> we even have proof of our friendship. Ah, uh, I don't got a dick, bro. Yeah, as long as a friendship lasts, bet be carrying them around. Oh, this really has got to be hurting my fucking tits, man. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, I didn't really... It was kind of hard to tell when she, she was facing forward that, like, how much the brace was actually like, holding back. First, it was like, like oh, I don't know if she really had any boobs, but then she sort of turned to the side at one point where she like spin, spun around. I was like, oh no, yeah, that's what, exactly what that was doing. <laughs> in which case, ow! I may not have boobs, but that, the idea of like repressing, like taking something that normally is supposed to be out and just pushing it back in just sounds painful. But the situation kind of changed recently when the school's policy shifted to training legal professionals who produce results. Allow me to explain. In the lawyer course I teach, producing results means winning trials. Professor Cord, on the other hand, taught that finding the truth was the only valid result. That's the Edgeworth way. Unfortunately, that clash of ideas created a rift among our students. See, he seems like he has every reason to, to hate her, give him motivation to kill her. At some point, we stopped talking about it, but it meant fewer arguments. It also meant we couldn't be as frank and open with each other as we used to be. I think I understand now. By putting their friendship on a pedestal, they actually did more harm than good. Seems they were, the relationship between the three of them isn't as simple as I thought. Juniper, thank you for talking to us about this difficult subject. 
yeah, thanks, Junie. Now, if you could tell us about the day of the murder. First, you gotta pick my little option! Junie, you told us yesterday that you went home a little after 6 p.m. Was that a lie? I'm sorry, I didn't tell you this before, but what actually happened was I left the art room a little after 6 p.m. and headed over to my dressing room, where I worked on my stage costume until 7. That's it? Did you go anywhere else? No, nowhere else. If that really were it, then there would be no reason to lie in the first place. Yeah. Just gotta be hiding something something else. Apollo, do your thing! Come on! Junie, do you remember this picture? Yes, but something's wrong here. Wrong? What's wrong? Oh, does something get photoshopped or something? I took this picture at around six six o'clock, which is before I left the art room. But the clock here says it's just after seven. By seven, I'd already been working in my dressing room for some time. So there's definitely something wrong with the time in this picture. Hmm. Could it be could it be somebody set that up then? Maybe either they doctored the picture or probably more likely they they actually had set the clock up to make it look like it was an hour later when in fact it really wasn't to in preparation for this. Hmm, I guess we better go check the art room. I'm guessing Professor Means wants to defend her so that he can get her, you know, he knows for certain that he can get her arrested. Or maybe fake evidence to get her off and they, they just wouldn't find the culprit? I'm, I'm not really sure. Okay, just one last question about the day of the murder. Countering O'Connor. On the evening before the mock trial, the evening of the murder, you ran into Hugh. Y yes, I did. <laughs> At around 7.15, I went to the main building before going home. That's when I saw Juniper. We didn't say much as we passed by each other. She seemed her usual self. That's it. Anything else you'd like to ask? Mm -hmm. She suddenly went silent. She always was terrible at hiding things. <laughs> Did he, like, confess to her there or something? She's trying to keep their meeting a secret by lying about going home at 6 o'clock. All right, we'll press the matter any further. No, fuck you, I would. <laughs> I don't know why. Her little sad face like that, where she just is like, there's something sort of adorable, but also kind of heartbreaking about it. Like, it's okay. Like, you just want to pet her head and be like, it's all right. <laughs> I'm sad. Is there anything else you notice on the night of the murder? Well, I don't know if this will help, but that evening, I went back to my dressing room to get something I forgot in there. It was well after the last bell rang. I'd say maybe around... 8.30? Right, 8.30, huh? That's over an hour after when, after when the crime supposedly took place. That's when I noticed that both stage statues were finished. They were quite large, and they each were covered with a white sheet. But I could tell. It made me happy to think that after all that hard work, they were finally finished. Oh, right. The statues that Robin made. So they were covered in white sheets. Maybe one of the statues was actually Professor Means. <laughs> or what? Or the killer. Or who, who, if it isn't Professor Means, I know I'm like really late and thick. Like, it's gotta be this guy. I really don't have any evidence yet, though. Maybe it was, yeah, maybe whoever the killer is is hiding under there. Junie, are you okay? <clears throat> Sorry, I'm a little tired. That's all. Oh my god, that's what gets me through the day. I need to give me one of those. Athena, I think this meeting is over. Professor Means? Yes! Yes! I will use any means possible to get the result I want in Juniper's case. The result I want in Juniper's case. He didn't say, he didn't say I'll get anything, do anything to get her off the hook. I already phrased it that way. But it will require a cons considerable preparation, so I must be off. Hold it! Hold it, sucker! Junie and Professor Means, I have a proposal. A proposal? Wait, this isn't another one of your crazy... By sundown today. Yes? I, Athena Sykes, along with Apollo Justice. Wait a second. Don't drag my name into... We're going to discover the truth behind this murder mystery! <laughs> what, what? We're going to bring you solid evidence showing just what this th that truth is. I see. So it has come to this, has it? It has come to this. If we succeed in doing that, I want you to promise that you'll accept it, Ginny, no matter how hard it is to hear. Then you shouldn't need anyone else to defend you except me. Have we got a deal? I trust that's okay with you too, Professor Means. 
Mm. <laughs> I'm just waiting for him eventually just to, to instead of doing a A-OK -okay circle, he just like flips her off and he's like, no, fuck you, bitch. I have no objections as long as Juniper is satisfied with this arrangement. Okay, well, he's not fighting it. I thought he'd be like, no, you can go fuck off. Okay, but only if it's the real truth. Could be he just doesn't expect them to get anything. I'm sorry to put you through this thing enough, but thank you. I've been thinking only of myself this whole time. Judy, it's way too early to thank me. You can thank me all you want. What once I get to the bottom of this? Very well. I will see you back here at sundown. Sorry for all the trouble, Professor. It's just she's new to the agency, so. Don't be silly. I found it all rather thrilling. Now let's just meet here. Let's meet here again later. If you'll excuse me, I better go. Okay, see you later. But if this trial proceeds in the same manner and ends in the same way as the mock trial, would you not lose everything you've worked so hard to gain? I've already seen this flashback! Stop it! Oh, there's no time to be thinking about that! I've got an investigation to do. I will find the truth by sundown, no matter what! Get out of my blooming way! Alright, where am I going? Let's go to the hallway! Or not! Not there either! Where am I going? Outdoor stage? Okay, yep. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. October 25th, Themis Legal Academy, Outdoor Stage. Uh, ah! Oh! Ah! I see you! I, I, I got a good look at you when I was recording. You had like purple pigtails. So my imagination is something just move. Oh, hello! Yes, I make I make my return. Oh, yes, here comes my theme. Do, 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 do. Afternoon, you two. Prosecutor Gavin, what are you doing here? Do you think sneaking onto campus like this is just slightly suspicious? I'm afraid I might not show up later in this game, so I'm trying to get as much exposure as possible. I'll have you know I'm continuing my investigation in the strictest of confidence. I want you to be caught napping at tomorrow's trial. And that means a thorough investigation today. The king lets a hand. <laughs> I'm not one to refuse a damsel in distress. But you needn't have asked for a lie. I intend to help I intend to help from the start. You're the best prosecutor, Gavin. Of course I am. Okay, time for a thorough investigation. I bet we missed lots of stuff yesterday. Like that chick is over there. Prosecutor Gavin, you were scheduled to perform at the school festival, weren't you? That's right, but I hadn't seen the stage until yesterday. That backdrop with the starry sky and big crescent moon isn't half bad. We also had some tricks up our sleeves to, to make the concert really rock. Biotechnics, a fog machine, big banners, things like that. It would have looked like this. Oh, the plants from yesterday. What's that design on the, the banner there in the back? Oh, there, yeah, there's his, his symbol, uh, the, the thing he always wears around his neck. And then on the right side is the the uh, balances of just, justice, is that what they're called? Uh, the, the, the scales, okay, yeah. And the scales are the school emblem. Oh, what's with the the number six? <laughs> Looks like it's in a serious it's in a serious pain or something. <laughs> Hello, look around my neck. Vina, <laughs> XNA on the XA. We actually ever get a clarification of what that was? That's the governor's logo for our line. Oh, a nice pig Latin air forehead, really smooth, <laughs> smooth bro, real smooth. <laughs> I actually don't know if I ever knew that. <laughs> we probably learned about it in Apollo Justice. I just don't remember. Oh, I, uh, I, I meant it looks like the number six. Rock, rocking seriously hard! Core! Nine, Fraulein. It's a G for Gaviners. Not a six. Whatever floats your pretty boat. <laughs> so, right, I, I, I'm, I'm cool with it. I'm cool like that. I'm cool like that. I'm cool like that. So, where's the banner? I don't see anywhere on stage. It was an important part of the show, but the school managed to misplace it somehow. It's a pity. But it's specially made from the, from heavyweight high gray cloth. A missing banner and two broken statues. Uh, pl mysteries are plenty to be so solved, yeah. Could be the something was inside the statues or something? To like, set something up? I... Come to think of it, one of the broken statues was the Prosecutor Gavin. I know, how dare they? As you can see in, here on the stage plans. Right here, we have the statue of me. All the way to the left of it. And right here, air rights statue. 
What little does that matter now, as we both fly in pieces thanks to you? <laughs> Air forehead. <laughs> what, what did I ever do to you? <laughs> I didn't do that. Actually, the statue broke into a rather, to rather large pieces. Why don't we try to put it back together? Maybe we'll learn something new. Hmm. Picking up the pieces of a shattered rock star. <laughs> Actum. That's one uber cool idea. <laughs> you are so mondo cool, girl. There might even be a song in there somewhere. Yay! Let's do this. Snap! Snell! <laughs> Is this an investigation or am I interrupting a German language club social event? What does Snell mean? Good. Well done. It means hot dog. <laughs> hot dog. Oh, what's hot dog in German? I want to know that. Yeah. That'll be my new catchphrase. If I had actually looked up at this the other day, I didn't really, all I did was examine the paper and I didn't look much at the statue. I, prob I probably would have figured out just from that, that bottom half that it was Clavier. Cause I sort of, I can see his outfit there. Oh no, Prosecutor Gavin, you're a complete, a complete wreck. Literally. Why in the world would someone do something like this? I don't know, but whoever did must have felt an amazing sense of release. <laughs> can I take that as a confession to F hat? <laughs> what? No. It's like I dreamt of doing that at some point in my life. I feel bad for Robin. She worked hard on these. Let's pick up the piece for her. You got it. Let's check every nook and butthole of the stage, ah. Where'd you hear that from? I've been hanging out with Air Edgeworth. He's a pretty cool guy who doesn't afraid of anything. Oh, there's a piece right there. Found one. Piece of Prosecutor Gavin's shattered pride. Are you saying my pride is as fragile as plaster of, of Paris? Looks like there are other large pieces scattered about. Okay, it's fine when we can. Found alone in the strangest of places. It's gonna be spread all over the place, huh? Found another piece of the statue. There should still be more. Let's leave no stone unturned. White fragment. It's a distinctive shape that be described as angular. Hello there. Found another piece of the statue. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Another white fragment. Oh, there's one. I can see it. <laughs> I see you, girl. Wait. You don't think this weird box here is? <laughs> Hands off! I knew it. I know that voice anywhere. Just ignore it. I mean, it just it made it's, it made its wishes loud and clear. This is the future cardboard box technology has afforded us, huh? <laughs> really? Just gonna leave it there? What if there's a piece inside of it? Oh, I'd come up here. Here we are. This is like another piece of statue. Thanks, Apollo. This makes five pieces in all. I think we have all we're going to find. Okay, let's get back to the where Prosecutor Gavin's statue was shattered. I think he might... Uh, uh, Prosecutor Gavin was shattered. I think he might want to reword word that. It's just like a jigsaw puzzle. Well, I don't see any other big pieces lying around. Yeah, let's see if we can put this statue back together. All right, Apollo, you come over here and Prosecutor Gavin, if you could hold this. Hmm? Oh, look at me, I am gorgeous. We did it, holy crap. Wow, looking good, Clavia. Not bad if I do say so myself. Yeah, but don't you think it's strange? Put the statue back together, but look. What's with all these leftover white pieces? Hmm, these two look like they go together. And these pieces too. Um, uh, Athena, what do you think you're doing? Don't stop me now! The artist inside me wants to get out and have a good time! Uh... Oh, oh, okay. Oh! So, what is it? Let's... Is that... It's the goddess of law! It's the goddess of law! <laughs> Judge Courtney just comes out of fucking nowhere. Oh, Jesus! Hello! It is me! Just making my quick cameo. Okay, that's enough. Bye-bye! <laughs> See you all probably never. Oh, it's the goddess of law holding a pair of scales in one hand and a sword in the other. So if this... If bashing over the head with the scales doesn't work, she'll just stab them. That's quite the feat you pulled off there, Fraulein. Ooh, I love that feeling you get after you work really hard on something. No, no, no. I know who it, it was. I meant to ask what it's doing here. Not sure, there's no statue like this in this in this stage plans. Still, I gotta swear I've seen the statue somewhere before. Statue was broken at the same time, but it 
No one knows where it came from. Mm, wait a minute. Let me get, look at my court record here. Is this what I think it is? Is it in this picture here? It is! It's right there! I knew I was, I was like, that weird ass thing back there is gonna play a part of this somehow. So what does that mean? Don't know, but it is definitely the same thing. The more we learn, the deeper the rabbit hole goes. Like Alice in Wonderland, yeah. At least we're moving in the right direction. Let's keep searching the stage for clues. I've been wondering about something this whole time. You know that pole at the edge of the, the stage? You mean this? It has a wire that goes off and connects to something somewhere. Um, to the other side? Oh. Fly. Oh, oh, it's the banner. That's where the banners went. Oh, where did the other one go? I got brought, brought in through the window. Let's look in the window. This is a wire for hanging banners of the stage. One of the policemen who was here earlier was checking in how it worked. Oh, so that's why the banner looks like it's out of place. The banners are hung and removed from the art room over there. That's the art room over there. That's the scene of the crime. Bingo, Fraulein. It's still crawling with cops, though. Hey, anyone in the art room? Hey! Hey! Oh! Hey! Oh! Hey! I wasn't expecting to see an animated, uh... Model of me come out and wave to you. Oh, it's you people. Ha ha! And justice we trust. I look like a little ant from up here. Hi! Ah, oh, it's Detective Fulbright! And justice we trust! <laughs> Is that some kind of greeting between you two? <laughs> the fuck am I looking at right now? Detective Fulbright, can you lower that banner from there? Of course. Just leave it to me. I'm on it! Like white on justice. How's that? Huh. Huh. Whew. Thanks, Detective. And justice we trust! Ha ha! Always glad to help. And justice we trust! And they just fucking flies out the window. Away! Well, I didn't know he could do that. I always had a feeling. <laughs> so is that some kind of greeting between you two or not? <laughs> Seriously, what the fuck just happened? Uh oh been tied up so we carry through the window so I'm guessing it was used to carry that statue maybe the statue is the actual murder weapon but there's no blood on it I guess it could have been cleaned off but it seems like maybe the, the broken pieces were, were were sent down along that well it looks like the banners down now let's go take a look look at this banner I don't think it would flap very well in the wind pretty sure that's the, the point Apollo on a flappable banner. Hey, I like that! It goes perfect with unflappable lawyers and unflappable rockers! It's like it was made for this fairy stage! Look at this, the bottom part is also knotted up. Let me try and unravel it. There's the scales. Oh, there's something on it though. Jeez, did you really have to? Have to? Don't come across an unflappable banner for every day. God, we are so stupid sometimes. But, you know, there's some things that you have to eat that have to yield to forces beyond themselves. What a cruel world we live in. Oh. Uh, hey, a scrap of paper was caught up inside. It's blowing away. No! I got it! I got it! Thanks, weird anthropomorphic duck. Yeah, it's time been passing through. Yeah, I'm making a cameo in this game too, because why the fuck not? If that bitch with the hammer can do, why can I? Because she's actually part of this series and exists in this universe? Shut up! I don't have time to listen to you guys and your weird fucking spiky hair, all right? I got Heartless to go kill. All right, I'll see you all in fucking 18 years when Kingdom Hearts 3 comes out. I got it. Yes, great catch, huh? Great catch. October, Hue 120. Looks like some kind of note. What does it say? October, Hue 120. What's that supposed to mean? Does it fit with another piece that was in the book? It was ripped out. A score, maybe? Pretty impressive. What do you consider that? 100 is a per perfect score. I don't see how even you can get beyond perfect. Maybe there were bonus points. Farline, shall we inspect the banner again? Now that she's been unraveled. I see London, I see France, I see freaking blood on this thing, I think. It's the emblem that is on Junie's, uh, Junie's school uniform. Hey, you're right. Wait a second. It's hard to see against the red material, but look. There's a dark stain here, just under the emblem. This banner was on a wire connected to the art room. Right, and the art room is where the murder occurred. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? 
This stain might be from the victim's blood! Trace amount of blood was found on it, yep. Statue doesn't look like anything like you, like you or Mr. Wright. The goddess bearing scales and a sword. She's a symbol of fairness and strength. But she and her symbols are shattered along with the statues of you and Mr. Wright. It's a direct challenge to the rule of law. But if they want to fight, there they've got one! Whoa, take it down, Notch Tiger. Save the fighting for when we find our culprit. Ooh, there was a whole lot of poking, poking in such a short time. Does that mean you're satisfied? Actually, there was one more thing I wanted to check out. See that metal fence back there? It's just that one segment, so it seems out of place. It looks like they, they were in the process of removing them after this stage was set up. But they were never able to finish finish on account of the murder. We should take a look if you think it could be important. Yeah, it's a big spot. Hmm, this track looks man-made. Hey, you're right. It's like it starts from behind the backdrop. Maybe a big muddy pro wrestler was hiding back there. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, that was totally random, but we'll never know until we take a look. Oh, on the, oh, there's one on the ground, too. I, I was looking on the fence. Looks like something was being dragged through through here, and that's where it started. Yeah, but what it, what it whatever it was, it's long gone. Oh, oh. The, the body was moved there, of course. Are, are we doing some of the sort of like what we did before in the, the whale case, where, we, where they... The body got moved in that big banner thing, and maybe it was buried under all the statue pieces or something to, to hide it. But whatever it was, yeah, it's long gone. Must have been pretty heavy. Perhaps it was used in setting up the school festival. Oh, then I guess I wasn't a pro wrestler. Damn! Still, it could be something important. Somebody come over here and grease me up. I'm ready! Well, that's about it for the stage. Right. I think we'd be, be better to search the art room next. I think I'll hang around here for a while. But make sure to tell me once once you find it, yeah. No, come with us, man. Find what? What else? The governor's banner that disappeared from the stage. You never know. It just might be connected to the case at hand. Really? Or does he just want his banner back? That too. <laughs> Don't tell me. So in short, that's... Hmm? Hey. Hmm. Ah! <laughs> It was me the whole time! That box! It just took off running! But why are we shocked? We literally looked at it earlier and we knew it was her. Remember, Paula? Oh, yeah. I have a pretty good idea who that is. As I suspect, suspect you do too. Come on, we can't afford to have any weird articles written about us! Main, main series over in that direction. After that box! <laughs> Paula just laser the shit out. <laughs> October 25th, Phoenix Central Academy, Maiden's Area. You don't see nothing. Miriam, you're liable to get tossed in the garbage truck if you hang around here. By me! I'm just an empty box. That's what you do with them. You throw them away. Mm. Oh, it's actually a different box this time. <laughs> Wipe the past clean with Crime Cleaner. Get sparkling clean with brute force. Danger. Toxic. <laughs> that seems accurate. Hey, did you change boxes? I like the new look. What does that matter anymore? I was a complete failure in court today. My work, my pride, my dreams, everything I worked so hard for, gone. Ah! No, don't start sweating on that one, too. Sorry, Miss Scuttlebutt, but doesn't believing in you had a scoop when you really didn't make you a failure as a reporter. Let's see your weird freak out again. Off a failure as a reporter. Yeah, I just, I just don't think it's really her, though. Who would have done it? Yeah. <laughs> There's your face. Ah, that was funny. Come to think of it, calling her failure as a reporter might have been a bit extreme. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I, she's supposed to be laughing, right? <laughs> Don't be despise me! Pack me away where I'll never see the light of day! <laughs> I've been cast aside to waste its way into a big pile of mushy paper mache! Gotta feel responsible for this. But, I kinda also don't give a shit. Now's our chance to prod her for information while she's vulnerable! Get the box! <laughs> I bet that's what you, just what you were thinking. What kind of person do you think I am? 
You read me like a book. <laughs> Ugh, flexing my Gato bracelet. Yeah, yeah come, come on, on. I haven't done shit forever. forever. Scuttling scuttlebutt. That was you on stage earlier, wasn't it? Why'd you run off like that? <laughs> Take a look at this. What are you showing me? A burnt, burnt, burnt old rag? Oh. Oh, was that the other part of that piece we that got ripped out, maybe? Wait, it's really hard to see. I think that's the Gavener's logo there. Oh, no. It's, okay, the other banner. So this is the banner that disappeared. It's all burned up. Don't look at me. I just happened to find it in the incinerator. Incinerator? Did Blackwell actually make the good on his threat to burn her box? <laughs> oh! Is that what happened? We should probably try to find out whether someone tried to destroy this on purpose. Yeah, this better sounding less and less unrelated to our case. Follow. Burnt fragments. No! Not my beautiful banner! The governors, no! They are dead, both literally and metaphorically now, too. Um, Mary, am I owe you an apology? I should have said you were a failure as a reporter. You're a failure as a human being! Oh! Wicked bird! Just like this fucking banner! Bird! Too late. I decided your journalism isn't for me. The last step is to erase all the photos on my PC. I'm really gonna do it! Here goes! Five percent! Ten percent! Four years of my life down the drain! Should we stop her, Athena? I don't know. I guess. Ma'am, you should keep publishing your weird paper. I didn't mean what I said, okay? You didn't mean it? Really? Oh, no, my photo! Stop! Cancel! Abort! Oh, uh, is this we're gonna catch the picture, maybe? Did you stop it in time? Deletion in progress. 99% complete. There are only two pictures left. <laughs> what do you know? They're going to be the pictures we need. <laughs> what are you going to do now, Athena? You owe it to her to make this right. I know. No, I don't. I don't she's the one who fucking decided to do it. Fuck her. <laughs> Seriously. I'll give a fuck. Don't worry, Miriam. Your photos may be on. But the memory of your photographic genius will live on forever in all of our hearts. Can I examine that cat over there? That cat seems important. Ah, oh, Athena, that was cringeworthy. Not as cringeworthy as Robin's female voice the other day! Bazinga! Yeah, ah! Uh, says the comment section. Hey, Mary, Miriam, check this out. I took some amazing photos of the, the three of them. I'm sure they really appreciate it. You, can't, you also caught their glowing hands, which I'm not really sure how you didn't notice when publishing this thing, but okay. I have a horrible eye for detail. Obviously, I'm the ace member of the newspaper club. The only member, in fact. Yeah. <laughs> Notes will make up for a lot left up for the photos you lost, but there, here are your newspapers back. Here, take these these things I don't need anymore back. There's no rest for the wicked. I plan on pursuing those three for as long as I live. Way to go, way to go, Athena. You just you just spurred her out to continue her horrible streak of madness. Graham, why are you so obsessed with Juniper, Hugh, and Rob Robin? Well, I'm obsessed. I'm not obsessed with them. It's not like I photoshopped myself into the, into their group to try to pretend to be friends with them. It's just they were so close ever since their freshman year. So, ah, uh, well. Dina, are you thinking what I'm thinking? Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Yeah, I think it's the only explanation. Whoa, whoa, wait a second. You're not thinking what I, I think you're thinking. Objection. Objection, bitch. That's exactly what he's thinking, Miriam. We're thinking that you think that I think that you're thinking that I think you're think, 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 think. You wanted it on their little trio. It's laptop falling out. Yep, there it is. Ah, ah, there's the face again. What's this? Right? Nah, yeah, we're gonna see it. That's one abuse laptop. I have lots of porn on there. My laptop won't turn on. Never thought my life would end so soon. I'm here 17 years. I really feel bad. Oh, I know. Bury him. We have a laptop at, at the office. We'd be happy to lend it to you. But that's my laptop. Shut up, Apollo. Huh? You have, you have a laptop I could use? Sure, but on one condition. I want you to ask Junie, Hugh, and Robin if you can hang out with them. What? Like I could ever do that. Sorry, but it's the deal if you want that borrow a laptop. You scare me sometimes, Athena. You're like good cop, bad cop, all rolled into one. I'm good and fucking evil. I do what I need to do, Apollo. Fine, I'll do it. It's, 
if that's all you want. Okay, I'll be by later to bring you your the laptop. Wait! It's not like I owe you or anything, but here. <laughs> I can imagine that's actually coming out of her mouth. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, it's a set of pictures. Looks like they're setting up the stage. Oh, yep, and that fucking old guy is there too. Oh yeah, there's somebody else in the background. Who is that with the construction helmet on? Oh, oh, it's the, everyone just getting the stage ready. No, he's the killer. Yeah, I took them when they were putting the stage backdrop into place. Wow, you sure have an eye for photography. From what I can make out anyway. These are the last two photos that didn't get deleted. They're all yours. Were the other photos important? Nah, I mean, they were just pictures of the person that was probably behind the case, but nothing too groundbreaking. Oh, okay, good. This, 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 this. Well, see you around, scary lure lady. I'll see you in hell. Yeah, it's totally not her. That was really impressive, Athena. What's next? Next up, we're gonna target the cat. Yes. He is the prince of the land of fire. Blue, and true in the heart of steel. Well, I'd like to talk to Hugh or Robin if possible. Okay, let's walk around, see if we can find a thing with this big gaping mouth of mine. Ah, la, la, la. Let's go to the lecture hall. Or not. Gonna wander aimlessly till shit fucking happens. Do, do, do. Yep, there we go. October 25th, Le Themis Legal Academy, one first floor hallway. You know, I heard you guys say, I remember at the beginning that, like, you didn't like how you couldn't examine, like, every nook and butthole of the investigations. They're definitely much more linear. They're, like, they're pretty much, pretty much guiding you by the hand. Not to mention, even if you do somehow get me messed up, you can just check out your notes here to tell you exactly where, where you need to go and what you need to do. But I honestly, I, I actually, I like it a lot better. I just, I just want to go. I just, I just want to get on with the investigation and do what I need to do. I don't want to dick around and like stumble around trying to figure out this like, okay, what fucking thing do I need to examine to get this thing going? I never really cared about all that extra fluff. I just want to do it. Let's get it done. So for, honestly, I'm finding this an improvement in my book. Hey, that's you over there. So it turns out this is a bow and arrow I was carrying, which is supposed to make sense because I am the archery club. Yeah, we wonder where with you, if you don't mind. If it was Mr. Ride, then sure, but you two. <laughs> I knew it. There's a head of Discord in Hugh's voice. Can I do it here? No, you can't do it here, Athena, because you don't have the cool uh, animation here. Because you're in a first-person perspective. You're not getting off that easy. After all, you're, you're a possible suspect, plus you actually confessed in court. Oh, come on. You didn't really believe me. Whatever. So what do you want from me? But to make it brief, I don't have a lot of time. I'm gonna see if you don't either. Why? Why'd you confess? Not to Gami. About your confession today, you weren't serious about that, were you? Let's just say I had no choice thanks to a certain lawyer who failed to get the job done. Gulp. So you're really prepared to take the blame for this? Not gonna happen. The voice on the tape is a female, so that rules me out. Let's put it this way. You don't actually believe that ridiculous play on words, do you? Well, my confession is just like that. A means to an end. Or as we say around here. The ends justify the means. How did I know he was going to say that? So he's clearly team means and uh, Juniper is, I think, team... No, Robin is team uh, court. And then Juniper, is she on either side? Does she just kind of roll either way? As sort of as the judge in the neutral uh, party, I suppose. Makes sense. Huck, but I do I actually do believe the voice is shouting Hugh O'Connor! The first confession was quite advantageous for the real killer. But if Robin or I were actually the killer, we wouldn't have confessed. It's that simple. Even you should be capable of such reasoning, or have I overestimated you? You'll make a great lawyer someday. Assuming you stop being a dick. I mean you seem to enjoy getting under people's skin. <laughs> Hmm. Hugh and Robin's confessions really prove their innocence instead of their guilt. It's going to take some serious thinking on my part. It sure looked like Prosecutor Blackwell was twisting your arm to testify earlier today. Is there some sort of secret he's using against you? Yeah. I have no intention of saying anything, anything more. Now, if you'll excuse me. I don't think so. Hold. I'm not through with you yet. <laughs> it seems the rogue prosecutor has it out for me. Oh. Nobody fucks with Blackwell and gets away with it. Leave and we just might discuss you know what. Ha! Ah. <laughs> no. Wait. A little statement Mr. Cool loses it? What's that all about? 
I, I changed my mind. I'll stay and testify. You really are rank amateur. Even if that were true, you think I'd open up to you? So he's not denying it. A secret might be causing discord in his voice. And again, he may, we have the same problem with Judy and Robin. <laughs> You're just wasting your time and mine. Next question. Damn it, I wish I had a fucking Magatama. I could chuck at you. What that meeting with Professor Court on the 23rd? Why did she want to see you? I have no intention of telling you. You'll have to force it, for it, force it out of me any way you can. Ah, Professor Means strikes again. Again, Hugh is in the lawyer course. But didn't Professor Court used to say that the only good result is the truth? So why don't you drop this whole charade and just tell me the truth? The truth? How can you be so sure it will help you solve this case? The truth isn't necessarily your friend, nor Juniper's for that matter. No, you're wrong! I don't care what anyone says, I'm going to defend Junie the right way, using the truth! It's the only way to honor Junie's wishes and Professor Quartz's memory. I see. Very well, Miss Sykes. I'll just fight tomorrow about that truth you're so interested in. You. But. <laughs> oh. <laughs> don't look to me if something happens to Juniper because of it. Understand? What? What's that supposed to mean? What a terrible thing to say. I thought you guys were friends. I don't give a shit. Yes, we were. Until just recently, actually. Were? I already told Juniper, so I might as well tell you. I don't really care about her anymore. What? Why? Did you... He, he must have... Oh, that's what it is. He When they ran into each other, he must have confessed to her, and she said she didn't want to do that. She just wanted to be friends. So then what was the point of the whole trial? And they were saying that when he does it, she's, he's going to confess to her. I guess they just didn't mention that he'd already done it by that point. Just I have my secret. She has a side you've never seen. Juniper's not all sunshine and rainbows like you think she is. What, what are you saying? This conversation is over. And I said I don't have a lot of time and I meant it. Fare thee well. You wait! He's gone. He disappeared into the night. But it's daytime. He doesn't care about her anymore. Why would he say that? He, he must confess she just said no. That didn't go as well, so well. I guess we'll just have to pin our hopes on this testimony tomorrow. Athena, what do you say we head over to the art room? Might be a nice change of pace. Hopefully the police have completed their investigation. All right. We don't really have much time left anyway. Oh, there's the painting over there. That's been knocked over of Juni. And then another one of Juni. It's like an abstract, though. Yeah, some weird shit in here. Oh, is that me over there? Is that a statue of my head? Oh, I look like the Lord of fucking Olympus. October 25th, Femus Leo Academy, third floor art room. Ha ha! Why, if it isn't my little lawyer friends again. Thanks for, again, for lowering, lowering that school banner for us earlier. Oh, hey, the the thing on the ceiling. That's the uh, elephant we saw in the first case. Uh, like One of them's like the bat, the bat elephant and then the good other thing, what other animal. Don't you mention it. Helping those in need is what my brand of justice is all about. And also putting my hands on my hips at all times. Right, so this art room was where the murder actually occurred. That's right. You can't see it with the naked eye, but there's blood on the floor. That area roped off in the middle of the room marks the spot. The police investigation is done, so if you want to look around, knock yourselves out. Okay. Let's have a little looksy doodle Hey, this area with the, the rope around it. I just told you! That's where we detected a large blood stain. In short, the victim was stabbed here, or somewhere close by. The fact that there's no visible blood means it was wiped up with something, right? Hmm. Oh, okay, no, maybe. Maybe that's what the other banner was used for that was burned. It was used to wipe up the blood. Because even if you wipe it up, I mean, it's still gonna be, you know, leaking blood, which is probably where the blood on the one that's down there tied in a knot came from, because they probably used it to transport the body. Right, we were able to detect trace amounts of blood. Merely wiping it does not remove all the evidence of wrongdoing. And that... Inertial is justice, right? <laughs> I'd appreciate it if you let me have the cool lines. <laughs> uh, his pouty face cracks me up. Is that the judge? Three best busts sitting on a shelf. A judge, a defendant, and either a lawyer or a prosecutor. The bearded one must be the judge. Cause, cause come on. And the bummed out looking one, the defendant. Look, there's another one that's fallen onto the floor. Now, which one fell? The lawyer or the prosecutor? Think, Apollo, think! This could tell us 
How tomorrow's show will go? Oh, just wait for tomorrow's horoscopes, thanks. <laughs> Hello, elephant! Actually, technically, we haven't run into you yet, so... Hey, look! That's you, uh, uh, that's you on this mobile Apollo! A red demon! Red demon? It's more like a snake curl around a brush to me. It's the elephant thing! No, no! See the antennas and the yellow spots on its back? Uh, anyone can see it's a ladybug. Wrong all around. Hmm. I guess we'll have to agree to disagree. Fine, we can investigate this further at a later date. Agreed? Well, we will. Don't worry, we will. Okay, let's do that. You okay with that, Athena? <laughs> I really regret bringing this up. There's the little pulley thing. Some wires and a winch. This is how they reveal the banners in and out. There's a nice view of the stage from here. Prosecutor Gavin is still standing in front of that broken statue. <laughs> Just stand there looking at it. Haha, <laughs> in your face, Elright. I am the Lord. I am the one that still puts his pieces back together. Not you and your shabble of a career. I fucking hate you. So it really wasn't, was, really wasn't you, Apollo. Don't worry, you can tell me. I won't tell anyone. Ah, uh, never clear my name unless we catch the real culprit. You did it, didn't you? No. Picture of a girl wearing a floor hat. Oh, it has the artist's name right here. R. Newman. Wow, Robin must have painted this. Oh, by the way, you guys also sort of explained how with Robin, she was pretending to be a guy because her parents were pushing her to be a prosecutor, but they, I guess they wanted, like, they, I guess they dreamed of having a son as a prosecutor or something, but when, what she really wanted was just be an artist. So when she sort of, you know, came back out saying, hey, I'm really a girl, she was like, you know what, fuck it, I don't want to be a prosecutor, I don't like being in this. Finally decided to go after what she really wanted. Is this Juniper? Clothes are different, but... Oh, look, there's a piece of paper stuck to the back. Let's see what it says. Completely lacks Professor Quartz Arts artistry. Must keep practicing, Robin. <laughs> huh, I guess there's plenty good myself. Wonder what it would have looked like if Professor Quartz painted Juniper. But it would have been really artistic looking. Is that what this is? A picture of a girl wearing a floor hat. Oh, it has the artist's name right here. Uh, yep. See, Quartz. Wow, Professor Quartz must, must have painted this. <laughs> the other one looks way better. That one's just all. It's all that abstract shit. It just sucks. <laughs> I think they look at it and they're like, this is fucking mind-blowing and amazing. It's like, it's just random shit thrown together. All right? It used to be a face, and then they just just ripped it to pieces and then put it back to look almost like a face, but not quite. It's what they consider art. I really don't get it. I swear, I've seen this girl before. There's an air, air of fragility about her and those pity-inducing eyes. Who is this again? Her name's on the tip of my tongue. Who? For God's sakes! Oh, there's the use thing. A trial script on the floor, and nearby an envelope marked to use. I wonder if Miriam's script was ever really inside that envelope. Let's see here. By Miriam Scuttlebutt. And the title is... Rogue, Rogue Noir. Crimson Blood and Dark Judgment. I wouldn't take a, take part in that mock trial. She begged me. It says there are special rules lying the payment of bribes while court is adjourned. Oh, you can bring up, in up to $3 worth of fabricated evidence. It also says... Welcome to the darkest mock trial ever, where the, the ends justify the means. Prosecution claims that the script that was supposed to have ha have been used. But the scripts were selected by Professor Court, considering how much she valued the truth. I seriously doubt she picked a script entitled Crimson Blood and Dark Judgment. Wow, you have a ti the title memorized already. Oh, hello there. Hey, it's gone. Remember that strange statue in the school camera photo? Oh, yes, okay. Good, good. You're right. I wonder where it is. Robin's a member of the Fine Arts Club. Maybe she could shed some light on this. Oh, come on. This fucking clock. It's the clock that created that major problem for Junie. Let's take a closer look. Don't waste your time. I've checked it, and it's 100% accurate. You sure? How'd you check it? Of course I'm sure. I compared it to my own watch. See? Um, Detective Fulbright, didn't you notice that your watch had stopped? It has? Ah! Uh, ah! This is unacceptable! We obviously can't rely on him. Let's take a look for ourselves. Let's see. Wait a second! It's ahead by one whole hour. Well, detective? Ah. Ah! But, 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 but. This clock must have also been an hour ahead when this photo was taken. Oh! In your face! So much for decisive evidence! So, that would fit perfectly within Judy's testimony. Prosecutor Blackwell won't like this. Almost feel sorry for the detective. Almost. Damn, damn, damn! You can at least pretend to feel sorry by wiping that big grin off your face. Big shit-eating grin. Don't give a shit. Wait just a minute. One minute. The clock is an hour ahead right now, sure. But what proof do you have that it was running ahead on the day of the crime? Hmm. That's a good question. 
Wait, I think I just might have something. Detective Fulbright, you would agree that there is a moon outside of this window, right? Sure, looks like a nice draw drawing of a crescent moon. Well, if, but if you look at the window in the back with the window, the witch attached to it, you'll see that the only view to be to be had is the opposite of the school building. Uh, oh! Oh, of course! They used that banner. The the backdrop from before. I, I, should, I feel like I should have recognized that. <laughs> sure. Oh, then, then what's this moon doing here? Hmm, I wonder. Hello, it is right there. Mr. Gavin, you were scheduled to perform at the school festival, were you? That's right, but I hadn't seen the stage until yesterday. That backdrop with this starry sky and big crescent moon isn't half bad. Isn't this the same as the one painted in the stage backdrop? Stage is right there. The proof's right here, Detective. This, sh this shows if it was 6 p.m. when the photo was taken. Oh, right here. The picture is 6 p.m. Take that! It's being lifted on that crane. I know what this moon really is. If you look at this photo, you'll know too. It shows where that where that moon and the photo came from and the truth of Judy's testimony. What? 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 Where? Where does it show that? If you look right here, it will all become crystal clear. Now. Take that! Behold! They were still prepping the stage, so his backdrop wasn't in place yet. This photo shows them in the process of moving the backdrop into position. I can see that. It's the big board hanging there. Hang here. The size matches, too. But there's no picture. That's a crucial detail. It is, but I believe what we're, we're seeing in, the in this photo is the back of the board. The back of them. That's right. And at around 6 o'clock when this was, was taken, a photo of the same board was being taken from the front. What, what do you mean the front? The front is against the wall. That's where you're wrong. What about the window? Remember how we said the moon wouldn't shouldn't even exist in this photo? Take a look. Are you suggesting the moon is the one on the backdrop? Duh! Exactly. In short, this photo was, photo was taken while the backdrop was being moved. What a coincidence! But as you can see, it was around 6 o'clock when the backdrop was being set in place. Oh! Got fucking wrecked, son. So the art room clock was running fast at least at least as far back as the day of the murder. Uh, how? 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 How could I ever face Prosecutor Blackwell now? Yes, I just blew a hole in a piece of the prosecution's evidence. Ha! Oh, we got pottery over here. Look, a piece of pottery. Looks like it's already been fi fired. I bet Robin made it. And I bet it won't last long, not with the way she deals with her own work anyway. Yeah, it seems like it's such a waste. I mean, this one already has some color on it. Looks just like bloodstains the way the glaze is dribbled onto it. Maybe it is. Just like bloodstains. Oh, shit. And justice we trust. That does look like bloodstains. We better examine it at once. I get it. The victim was stabbed in the middle of the room where the big bloodstain is. And then brought over here, at which point some of her blood was dripped onto these pieces. Means the body very well could have been dropped from this window. In the mock trial script, the body was dropped onto a mat. Then a ball cart was used to move it over to the stage. The maintenance area is below this room, and the storehouse there has a mat and a ball court. Cart. So even the moving of the body was carried out just like the script. The killer sure had a thing for Junie's script. Well, what did you expect? That's why we suspected the defendant in the first place. Well, you're wrong, and I'm going to prove it in court! All right, guess that about wraps up all the important stuff. Find anything new, Detective Albright? Ah-ha! Good question. Unfortunately, the answer is nothing much yet. Sure is confident for having found nothing. But if we're talking outside of the art room, there has been a major breakthrough. Oh dear, unless I find out what that is, I don't know what I shall, shall, what I shall do. No need th for the theatrics. I was told I could fill you in on this one. Wow. You saw right through me, Detective. I'm impressed. We're going to get arrested for murder via unwarranted flattery, are we? So, what's the major breakthrough you mentioned? You want to know? You really want to know? You really, really... Come on, just tell us already! Aw, oh, you're no fun. Anywho, <laughs> anywho, we got the results of the voice print analysis back. Voice print? You mean for this tape recorder? Exactly. The voice belongs to the suspect, Miss Woods, beyond a shadow of a doubt. See you right here. They analyze the voice on the tape inside and out. Oh. Okay. So it was her yelling, Hugh O'Connor. 
Maybe she was yelling at him because he was confessing to her and she he wouldn't leave her alone or something? And you thought the voice on the tape was saying Hugh O'Connor. Ah-ha! Thanks for the good laugh, Miss Sykes. Darn! It's the last person who was laughing at me. I still could have said that. So that is evidence that Juniper's shouting you're a goner around the tongue of death. If we were to take this as truth, how are we supposed to make sense of it? I don't know. I can't think of any reason why Judy would shout that in the first place. Well, I think we've examined pretty much everything we can. By the way, did Prosecutor Black will tell anything about tomorrow's trial? Injustice, we trust! It's no use trying to pry more information out of me. Having just learned that the clock had been one hour fast, means we're back to square one concerning the suspect's actions that day. Hmm, wonder what the main argument will be about now. How about how the body was moved will be my guess, but Prosecutor Blackwell's got his own plans. Oh, does he now? Um, Detective Fulbright? Try as you might, I won't say another word about the investigation. No, I wasn't going to ask about that. I was just wondering, wondering if you'd seen Robin. Oh, you mean Miss Robin Newman? She was just here a moment ago. And she mumbled something about watching videos in the lecture hall. Video? What video? Thanks, Detective. Athena, I think we should stop by the lecture hall. Right, let's go! Away! Okay, 20, October 25th, or for our lecture hall. There she is, Robin! Hey, Robin! Oh, Athena, Apollo. What are you watching there? E oh, it just so happens to be a video of the mock trial. I used to, ha I had to use a bit of a cohesion to get it, but the dens just find the means, right? There it is again. This means sure has a lot of influence around here. I thought she was pulling for court, though. I misremember that. Care to look into the truth connection, but the true connection between the murder and the mock trial with me? Ah! <laughs> oh my God, so beautiful! Why do you carry a shoe around with you? Sounds great, but you mind if we ask you some questions first? Ah, uh, sure. I'll tell you anything. W A N T. Why did you confess? Not your confession today. Why'd you do it? Because Juniper hasn't done anything wrong. I had to stop the trial by any means possible. Right. The ends just by the means. So you're a follower of Professor Means, too. Professor Means is a wonderful teacher, as was Professor Corp. I like them B-O-T-H. She brushed that one off like a pro. With that style of justice, you run the risk of breaking the law. Well, I'm, pretty, I'm prepared to quit school because of this case. What? Why? I, I... I want to be an artist! That's what I really want, man! But no! My parents forced me to study to become a prosecutor! But if the, the trial went south, you'd have to drop out and give up being on, a, on being a prosecutor. That's what you're really after, isn't it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Talk about someone who literally changes at the bat of an eye eyelash. It's really funny. Have you guys noticed how her bangs will actually... When she, when she goes into her uh, manly persona, her, her bangs move inwards. It looks it looks like her eyebrows, so she looks angry, but it's really just the bangs of her hair. But then when she turns into a girl, they move outward, and then you can actually see her real dainty eyebrows, and they're not really angry. It's, <laughs> it was a really clever design. I actually only noticed it when I went to go with the, the thumbnail for her. I guess she's been dealing with her own problems, too. That totally makes sense. Yeah, I suppose so. That doesn't make, make what she did right. I'm just a knucklehead, doo doo doo. <laughs> you tell us about what you were doing on the night of the murder? Uh, finishing a statue, I was on the stage up till the last bell. That's right, you made the statues of Mr. Wright and Prosecutor Gavin, didn't you? Uh, uh yes, uh, yes I did, both of them. It's just a formality, but can you prove you were making the statues at that time? <gasps> can I prove it? You think I'm the killer now? No, it's not what I me meant. I will Beyblade you, bro. If you and Robin were still at the school after 7, 8, 7 p.m., but neither of them can prove exactly what they were doing. <laughs> you did, bitch. I killed her. I no, I killed her. Could one of them really have murdered the presser court? Now the secret's out. Have there been any problems now that everyone know here knows you're a girl? worries there. I discussed the matter with Professor Court some time ago. I had this guy come over to me and be like, Oh, thank you, God! I've been so sexually confused for so long! Now it all makes sense! Thank you! Thank you, Robin! Thank you! It was really weird. I told her I wanted to let everyone know I was really a girl. 
And I just found out that she spoke with the school administration on my behalf. Wow, they must really like you. <laughs> I know, right? But I now I can finally be myself here at school. I don't have to hide the fact that I'm a lovely, that I love girly clothes. That's why, Athena, I simply must have this. And this by any means possible. What? But, but this is evidence we need for the trial. Sorry, but no can do. Oh, don't be a party pooper, Athena. Come on, please. Pretty please. It's useless evidence by this point, probably. Yep, stage co costume related evidence taken in classic and justifies the main style. <laughs> yeah, I love the ridiculous ways they get rid of the evidence here. Like, what if that ended up actually solving the whole case right there? But no, gone forever. Oh, darn! There's nothing I can do now! Anyway, thank you again, Athena. Thank you for revealing for who I, who I really am. I wanted everyone to know before the Stitch, the stitch found out. The Stitch. Sounds like a new lead. Uh, you mean, uh, Scuttlebutt? There's a rumor going around that one of the students here is a Stitch. <laughs> I hear they're watching everything we do. Our activities, our relationships, our interests. Were you there at the trial? Were you, like, did you not see the first part where we interrogate her and she literally said that in front of everyone? And reporting it all to one of the professors. Why would anyone do that, reporting it to the professors? Officially, I heard it's to seek out misconduct among the student body. The rumor has it grades were being brought, bought and sold through their, this surveillance network. That's bribery. The situation at Themis Legal Academy is worse than I thought. Well, this is important stuff. I still want to ask about that thing in the art room. I'll have to present it some evidence to show her what I'm talking about. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. I don't know what to do, dude. It doesn't make any sense, bro. Robin, I just remembered something I want to ask you. This photo shows a piece of art on the table. Do you know what it is? What? <laughs> what? Whoa! Look at this unique art and success. That's me one Professor Quartz creates his bag. Professor Quartz artistic sense? Woo! Professor Quartz artistic sense? That's a tough, tough one. I'd say it's avant-garde and very eclectic. In other words, it's weird and all over the place. Just like you. <laughs> Come to think of it, that strange looking painting in the art room was one of Professor Quartz's works, wasn't it? The statue in the photo was originally a statue of Lady Justice. Lady Justice? Professor Quartz planned on placing it on the judge's bench in the lecture hall. Yeah! But the day before the mock trial, it broke while she was polishing it. So then she take it back to the art room and try to fix it somehow. So, this is the statue in its proper state. You bet! Just look at it, what that wild silhouette! Wow, it's so C-U-T-E! I don't get it. Do you have to be an artist to appreciate this stuff like this? I think it's butt-fucking-ugly. Athena! The late justice that you put together on the stage. Oh, right! I didn't realize before, because it was in a pieces, but before it was smashed. Maybe it didn't look like Lady Justice, but more like it does in the photo! Yes! Okay, good! We're totally stupid! But what was it doing on the stage? Lady Justice. Okay, good, good. Well, we figured it out before the trial. Because <laughs> it seemed pretty obvious. Well, I don't think that back covers it. Okay, how about watching the mock trial video with me? What do you say? Sure, sounds good to me. Sure, so how do you want to watch it? Eh, <laughs> all classroom desks at the school have their own built-in computer, you know. Wow, this place is definitely a lot cush cushier than I thought. I know you guys are in a hurry, so I'll just fast forward to the important parts. Let's start with the professor's pre-trial speech. Will it be fully animated? Now, good afternoon. I would like to think, start by thanking you for coming here today. Oh, that sounds like Professor... Oh, Professor Means, okay. The mock trial, the crown jewel event of the school festival will begin shortly. Is the camera like this the whole time? Yeah, it's in a fixed position in front of the stage. When I was a student, I too could hardly wait for this day to come. How come teacher's speeches are always make me so sleepy? <laughs> Let's just skip to the end of his speech. Oh, now let the mock trial begin. Hey, what's the deal here? Why is Judy so large in this shot? Looks like she cut right in front of the camera. Juniper was also in charge of the audio. Even though she was already playing a part of the mock trial itself. She had to do it to keep the strict, keep the strict detail secret. She was all over the place that day. When she wasn't in the trial, she was in the audio control room dealing with the music. Oh, so this is what the lecture hall looks like. 
Looks like there's a judge's bench back by the screen and a witness stand up front. What about these balconies where the professor's name's on them? This is the faculty seats. Professor Mays and Professor Court were in charge of scoring the mock trial. Hmm, okay. Okay, let's fast forward this a bit. This a bit. And that's why the Fennet is definitely guilty! Ah, oh, that was me, could you tell? Objection! A frail co-ed used her bare hands to stab a professor with an arrow. I don't think so. Read that line in the, the mock mock trial, Apollo, but you made it sound kind of weird. <laughs> Give me some slack. It's my first time reading that script. I think Juniper is going to speak next. I, I didn't do it. I suffered a breakdown. I pretty much lost it. It's true, I shouted, you're a goner, but I didn't mean it. Wow, an emotional performance. She really put an actress to shame. Wait, could you go back and play that scene again? Wait a demon second! That was also in the script! Really think it's necessary? Didn't do it! I had suffered a breakdown and pretty much lost it! It's true, I shouted you're a goner! But I didn't mean it! Stop! Did you hear that? I think you're onto something. Let's play a pause part again! I don't follow. What are you guys so excited about? I think it's a piece of evidence should explain it. Time to show Robin a piece of evidence that is leaks the, the, the line we just heard. It's time. Take that. Tape regard. I'm sure you remember this. It contains a face female voice shouting a violent threat. I'll play for you. You're a goner. The voice, the voice and the performance do sound similar, but I can't believe this is happening. It's just a possibility, but the voice on this tape is really, really is a recording. Oh. It, so maybe the person was watching the video and it got caught on recording, or someone tampered with it and took the audio from the recording to make it sound like she was there. I made from the mock trial video, and that means the was fabricated. Ah, uh, yep. Didn't get to do a voice print analysis in, in time for court today. That's why the gender of the voice became so important. And if the real killer had foreseen that gender, it would become a key in today's trial. I'm gonna try to deflect attention away from himself by speaking the subject, suspect female. So basically, the only one with something to gain from doing this is our sole male suspect. I still don't think it's me, but okay. Wait a second. No way! Angry Banks! Professor Means cr Credo is the end justifies the means. So it makes perfect sense that a student who took those words to heart would fabricate ever evidence. We need to get that tape analyzed as soon as possible. Yes. Oh, well, I mean to assist you with that. Hello there. Prosecutor Gavin, at least make some kind of noise when you know we know you're they're there. It's go big or go home with the rockstar entrances, Fraulein. Timing is everything. Let me make a copy of that tape right now, and I'll get you the results as soon as I can. I trust that would be all right. Very much so. I'm sure you'll arrive just at the last moment to save us. Thanks. That's how I do, baby. Well, Athena, it's almost sundown. Isn't it about time we head over to the detention center? I think Judy will agree that this is something that could prove her innocence. But will her heart really be open to accepting it? She had to have known this was what I'd find. She had to have... Fuck truth. October 25th, detention center, visitor's room. And that about covers the main gist of our investigation. I'm here too. I see, very interesting. You've been quite the busy beaver today. I'd say you're the beaver here. Thank you for all your hard work, Athena. Well, my time's about up, and it will be getting dark soon, so... Junie, you must be tired after being on your feet all day. You should go home and... No, wait! You have to listen to me! I don't... I don't want to hear anymore. I know what you are going to say, Athena. Junie, you promised. We're going to discover the truth behind this murder mystery. We're going to bring you solid evidence to show you what the truth is. If you succeed in doing that, I want you to promise that you'll accept it, Junie, no matter how hard it is to hear. Okay, but only if it's the real truth. So please, please just listen to what I have to say. Once you've heard me out, I'll let you decide what to do. Listen to me, damn it! Voice this recording has been proven to be yours, Junie. And in the mock trial video, we can hear you reading your line from the script. We're having both of them analyzed now, but from what I can tell, the voices are the same. 
And the only one who'd benefit from faking the voice recording would be you. But that doesn't make any sense. I mean, you confessed in order to protect me. This may sound strange, but his confession is a ploy to make himself look less suspicious. In other words, he was just pretending to protect you. Besides, his confession came after you and Robin had already confessed. If he hadn't confessed right then as well, wouldn't that have seemed a little suspicious? Say what you will, Athena, but none of us would hurt a fly, let alone kill someone. He was a gifted student. He gets outstanding grades and never causes trouble. Oh, oh yes, oh, it's my time to shine. Wait, Athena, my bracelet's racked just now. It says, I, it says Black will let me do some trial. I have to just do it during these investigations. Where you can't see my big bulgy eyes. It did, but why? Dooney, can you look me in the eyes and repeat what you just said? Oh, um, none of us would hurt a fly, let alone kill someone. Hugh is a gifted student. He gets outstanding grades and never causes trouble. Probably the never causes trouble part, right? Or maybe, I can't imagine she's been lying about his grades. I'm sure of it, she's lying. Oh, let's do it. Ah, uh, here we go, my moment of glory, guys. It's a gifted student. It's outstanding grades. It never, it's gonna be here. It never causes trouble. Where is it? Where is it? Oh! There! Gotcha! 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 <laughs> I think her heart is beating or something. Oh, oh, she's coughing. She did pretty start coughing when you were under stress. <coughs> Can't hide from me no matter how hard you try. No, this gives a big moldy eyes of mine. When you said that, it never causes trouble. The cough escaped and made your scutter f scar flutter. As for why you were stressed, because you were lying. <coughs> Full of shit! Oh my god. G Junie, you're trying to hide Hugh's connection to this case, aren't you? Well, that also ties to a secret about yourself. A, a secret a about me? I don't understand. I already told Juniper, so I might as well tell you. I don't really care about her anymore. What? Why? Juniper's not all sunshine and rainbows like you think she is. He ended their friendship after he found out about Junie's secret. Which means... You must have felt betrayed by Junie, making her the killer, the accomplice, the snitch. Uh, uh, the snitch? You were Professor Court's snitch, weren't you? There's a rumor going around that one of the students here is a snitch. Oh, I thought it was suggesting Scuttlebutt. I hear they're watching everything we do, not our activities, our relationships, our interests, and reporting it all to one of the professors. About fulfilling that role, you learned something about Hugh you'd rather forget. I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. Judy, please, stop hiding things from me. I hate having to force things out of you like this. Except we're going to have to do this the hard way. Time to review the evidence and see if I can pro can't prove my hypothesis. Is there something that proves Judy's the snitch and Hugh's connection to the case? Take that! Yeah. Right here in Professor Court's planner, it says routine report. It's meant to mean that this, when this snitch would report into the Professor Court. I also believe Professor Court planned to meet Hugh in private based on the snitch's info. info. For their meeting, Hugh must have put two and two together and figured out your secret. So you see, it all makes sense only if you're the snitch. Junie. <laughs> oh. Ah! Forgive me. Forgive me, Thena. I, I, I haven't lied to you this whole time. The truth is, I... I suspected you from the start! You did. Now this is surprising. Oh, uh, it makes me sad to see you crying like that. I'm so sorry. I've talked about friendship so much, but I've been a terrible friend. <laughs> Juniper, I don't have that special kind of hearing that Thena does. But I don't need to sense the pain you're feeling inside. And its intensity is directionally proportional to how you feel about your friend. Am I right? Aww. <laughs> Apollo! Please, Junie, tell, tell me why you suspected Hugh. 
I have a feeling that will be the key to getting at the, to the bottom of this whole case. What exactly was your role as class snitch? Prison Court told me how Academy alumni had strayed from the path of justice. The dark age of the law, huh? She didn't want any more of her students going astray like that. A few others at the Academy shared her view. I thought her ideas were beautiful, though sad and unrealistic. She asked you to, to be her eyes and ears, didn't she? I used to report to her once a month about any wrongdoings I'd see her heard about. And that report session in her planner, the one from October 22nd, was a part of that. Yes, that's why I reported you to Professor Court. She said she her own friend. What about? I'd actually overheard Hugh talking. What'd you hear? He was talking to someone on the phone. I think it was one of his parents. Well, what were they talking about? Something about having paid money for good test scores. I only overheard him talking, so I never did find out who the money was going to. What? That's bribery! He was buying his way through the school? If that's the case... And that evidence that always seemed out of place might actually be about his secret. Oh, this? Take that! We found this while we were investigating the stage. It's got Hugh's name on it. I didn't know what the number meant at the time, but now I'm after now that I hear I'm hearing about bribes, it must mean that a bribe of 120 120 grand was to be paid in October. Good lord. 120 grand? Fuck me! That's some serious dope! Some more. Take a look at this mark. The same page mark is on the pages of Miss Professor Court's planner. Hey, you're right. Well, duh, I thought... I, that was so obvious. I can't believe we haven't, we haven't brought that up yet. But wait, why would Professor Court have that kind of information in her planner? You don't really think the person who was taking the bribe money was? It's just a possibility at this point. But it may indeed have been Professor Court. That seems sort of strange. I would have thought this weird beard guy, beard guy was doing it. But... but... Th th that's impossible. She'd be the last person I'd ever suspect of accepting bribes. Like I said, it's just a possibility, but a rather good one. Maybe their private talk had to do with the possibility of the bribery being exposed. What started as a little argument soon got out of hand. It's not your fault, Junie. Anybody would have suspected Hugh if they knew what, what you knew. No, I don't believe that alone would have driven into murder. There's another reason why I suspected Hugh. You've got to be kidding me. There's another reason? Tell me! Woo! I saw you around 7 p.m. the day before the mock trial. Oh, she's finally ready to talk about that. When I... When I saw him, his... His... <coughs> oh, Athena... <coughs> Junie, are you alright? Just try to relax and tell me what happened. Come on! Come on! I... I never wanted to see what I did. But I'll have to live with it, won't I? In that hallway, Hugh's hands. Oh, zombie. With blood. Yes. <laughs> Doom. Ah ha ha! Ah ha 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 ha! His hands were dripping with blood! Oh my god. I don't know that would still pull a fast one on us, but they're not looking good for him. Look like a fucking zombie, though, who's just like, ugh. Can be in a daze. What? But why? What am I going to do? Get down. I know you can't be the killer. But my mom keeps telling me he is. No matter how hard I try to convince myself he isn't. Oh, what am I going to do? You. You. He's. I. I can't take this anymore. Yeah. Aww. So you hear the fact that she hadn't seen Hugh and said she went home to sit at six because she wanted to avoid talking about what she saw. Judy, it must have been terrible holding all of that in. But it's going to be okay. I'll get to the bottom of this. I... No, I think it's still going to be Professor Means. We're not getting any real solid evidence yet, but if she really if she really believes that strongly that he probably didn't do it, it's more likely than that he helped his good buddy Professor Means, right? The guy that he idolizes. He's like, help me lift this dead body up into the thing, you know? So his hands were covered in blood. So he, like, maybe he was an accomplice, but I don't think he was the one who actually did it. That's my promise from one good friend to another. 
I'll be defending Juniper tomorrow. That's okay with you, Professor Means. My main concern is whether you can defeat that prosecutor. But I won't try to stop you. I will be watching from the gallery. But this thing, he's not trying to stop us, but I guess that would make it look suspicious if he did. But it really doesn't seem like... He's got a good poker face if he really is. <laughs> yes! I shall look forward to seeing what sort of results your methods can produce. Good luck tomorrow. Now if you would excuse me. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I really mean it. I wish I trusted you from the start. You have to cover the truth tomorrow. I know you can do it. Don't worry. We already know that the prosecution's key piece of evidence is a fake. And thanks to you, we figured out the motive too. Mm. Let's give this our best shot, Athena. To let Tamar be the day Juniper walks fucking free. I wouldn't have it any other goddamn demon way. We should all be ready now. What could possibly go wrong this time? Knock on wood. Knock on it. Still. There's this strange, uneasy feeling I can't shake. I better be Im imagining it. Yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna be that. It, it's, it's not as clear as it seems to be. There's no way. I am betting my fucking left testicle on it. To be continued. I am so fucking ready to save this girl again, for the first time. Oh, uh, it's getting good though. I, I, I feel like. Now it's really starting to get into a good like I feel like the first part's always kind of a little slow because we're really only the, whatever the first p trial part is always just skimming the surface of what the reality of it's gonna be but when you start really digging in deep that's when it starts to get good really good hope you guys enjoyed this episode but if you did please leave a like and a favorite it really does help me out and subscribe if you're not already become a piggy penguin I'm aboard the SLP where the days are always sunny and the vids are always funny and as always, guys, till next time, stay classy.